Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one yet again based on one of your newer suggestions. This one also having to do with yet another tree-like cryptid. So I just talked about one of those the other day and I was looking at the information on this one and realized that it's very much along the lines of the same subject matter. And in fact, somebody posted a great suggestion the other day where it was, why not create a playlist of all these plant-like cryptids that I've talked about in the past? Because there have been quite a few number of these videos within my video series here. So I went ahead and I did that. And then I added all those plant-like cryptid videos there. So when you have a chance, please check it out. You'll also see this one there soon. And it also, I did one more thing ahead of time. I went ahead and they posted another set of playlists that are more specialized in the world of cryptids and monsters. So in one case, I did one that was my favorite cryptids ever. Another one involving along the lines of the scariest ones. Another one involving dinosaur-like cryptids. So I'll be doing more of these playlists because I realized that they've been doing a bunch of videos, over a thousand plus now. And so it's a great way way to be able to specialize things there. So thank you so much everyone for that suggestion and I'm glad to be able to share this new video here. You're looking at it now in fact as far as what this plant like cryptid is and is called the Peng Hu. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info associated with this ancient cryptid. So what is this Peng Hu? Well again it's a tree like cryptid that is more along the lines of a tree spirit and it's found in Chinese Chinese folklore slash mythology and it's been around so long in fact at least the first early and known recordings written recordings of it are a couple of centuries back but the idea that trees themselves actually live for thousands thousands of years there's a notion that this thing could actually be far older at least when it comes to the first recorded uh, writings and that makes perfect sense considering the fact that 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 trees could they can live so so long there's nothing preventing as far as these things being uh, so far more back in terms of their age. But yes, this creature, this tree-like cryptid, this Peng Hu, uh, if you want to know specifically when it was first recorded, you're looking at around the ages of 220 to 280, so around 3rd century. Um, uh, AD when it comes to it. In fact, two manuscripts first talked about this tree-like cryptid. One was known and it has a unique uh, Mandarin name, but I'll go ahead and I'll talk about its English name. It's known as the Diagrams of the White Marsh. And then another one is known as the uh, Search of the Supernatural. And yet, yet and another one, a little bit later, in fact, around year 1500 or so, is known as the Commendium of Materia Medissa. So very fascinating stuff in terms terms of several manuscripts, several writings, all documenting this thing, whatever this is. And as good news is, though, it's not necessarily a bad cryptid. In fact, that once it seems to be left alone, um, if but for the fact that people just come across it by accident. And here's what I mean. So as far as the first earliest known set of recordings or writings, there apparently was a ruler at the time, a guy uh, that was known as the first ruler of Wu by the name of Lu Ching Shu. And apparently he commanded a an area there in China. And for whatever reason, he decided to dispatch someone, an anonymous man, to go down and cut a great tree. In fact, if you wanted to get more specific as to what the Peng Hu tree looks like, if you ever come across one, or at least you want to get a good idea in terms of trying to hunt one down, you would have to go into the trees that look like this. They're called the camphor trees. They're actually known by another more scientific name, but at least a more moniker, like a more uh, common name, is the camphor tree. As you can see, it's a giant tree. This is one of those trees that definitely dwarfs any of the other smaller trees like you tend to see around retail stores. Now, this is something that is indicative of a tree that has had the time and age to be able to just grow and grow and grow. So a very large, very majestic looking tree. If you see some of these out there and it just looks very unique, then that's where you have a good chance that you're running into this Peng Hu. But as far as what you truly want to know, like when you, what you truly want to know to be able to uh, realize 100% that you're dealing with this tree-like spirit, that's this. So this anonymous man went to this great camphor 
tree and he, when he was told to cut it down he did so he took a giant axe and he just started cutting it but then after a few strokes apparently some blood started to flow right from the bottom of the trunk so that's the first indication that you're dealing with a pinghu and then when that happened and the trunk fell over that's when he realized that on the inside there was something very unique apparently there's this I couldn't do I discern if it's like a solidified animal. I'm guessing it is that that's the case. In other words, it's not a spirit, like it's not a wispy spirit that you can see through. It's a real, it's a real living thing. It's an animal, but there it is in the middle of a trunk. Apparently, it's a small creature with the body of a dog and the face of a man. And then that's when he realized that this was, in this case, this Peng Hu. So this spirit, whatever it is that encapsulates this tree, this Peng Hu tree. This spirit is essentially from whatever that creature is, whatever that dog-like creature is. I don't know if it's living at the time of the tree being living, because once that trunk was cut down, one can presume that the tree is no longer alive, basically. And so who knows if that dog-like creature was in turn killed right then and there at that moment, or if it was truly just not living like it was just there standing still um standing um in the come sign and maybe i could call it like a cryostasis uh, point something that was just there but not living it was almost like frozen solid but its spirit was still circling around the tree and making it alive if that's the case then at least when the trunk was cut down then it also ended up uh, killing that particular spirit like creature but in any case if this anonymous man saw it realized what had happened realized that it, it was one of the ancient peng hus when i was reading this it made me uh, uh, made me come to the conclusion that apparently this mythology had been around again for a longer time if he came to that point that he was able to see that that's what that was he could name it in other words right then and there as far as it not being a mystery but yes he was able to then see it and then for whatever reason he decided to take that creature whatever this dog-like creature is with the face of a man and then cooked it and then he ate it and then it just tasted either as a dog meat or in other cases i was reading it tasted more on the lines of a pig-like meat but that's another um basis on there too but yes this black dog-like creature was in turn cooked and then steamed and then eaten and then that was it so that's essentially one of the earliest encounters there of the Peng Hu. But that's how you come across it. If you see a giant, in this case, camphor-like tree, and then for whatever reason you start cutting it down, or who knows, maybe by accident, you accidentally chip it away, and then you see blood coming out of it, then that's when you're dealing with the spirit of, of, of whatever is in there, which again, could be that dog-like creature. But yes, as far as any other info, anything else as far as other encounters, that seems to be pretty Pretty much it whatever this is there seems to be only a few of these around um there don't seem to be like more encount like i'm uh, like what i'm looking at is all these trees that are being cut down for regular use like when it comes to creating paper or furniture or other type of, of items needing wood you don't hear too many stories there in china of coming across blood coming out of all these trees so this thing is apparently a pretty rare entity this this tree like cryptid uh around there in china so maybe it's so rare in fact that it's well hidden or who knows maybe that they just live out a natural life and it ends up passing away unfortunately there's not too much information to create on this all we go by is again all these old manuscripts that are associated with it but still it's interesting to find out that this stuff was written way back when and at least these encounters were documented as such but they're so rare that nothing seems to be in all the lines of any other descriptions to this day at least though like I mentioned in some of my other uh, tree-like cryptids, those are those that seem to be almost mean or protective of their areas. Not in this case, this is a docile tree-like cryptid that's just there, just living its life, and then for whatever reason, if someone comes across it, then that's when they realize that they've accidentally or purposely killed it. So, But if anybody has any more info, anything else I might have missed, please post those comments below. Anybody there? from china maybe in some of those wood-like areas if you know of any specific locations associated with 
this camphor trees, please. It'd be great to hear and then uh, see if anyone maybe has any known encounters. What I'm looking for specifically is if there's any exact spots. Because I remember in one of my other tree light cryptids I was mentioning that there was a spirit associated with it. People that thought that there was one, I can't remember the name of it at this moment, but people that thought that there was a spirit there in that tree, they would put this special bow around it. I think it was almost like a yellow or reddish type bow, and that would indicate, hey, don't do anything to this tree. It's protected. It has the spirit within it. Do not cut it down. Do not do anything bad. Not just for the sake of the tree, but also because it want to make sure that nothing bad happens to the person that comes across this angry spirit if something occurs to that tree. So I remember reading that. So I wonder if those are the same associated with it. But still having, in this case, a dog-like creature with a face of a man, pretty creepy stuff, especially when someone decided to eat it at that point, which, by the way, I forgot to mention is another thing. Apparently, there's medicinal purposes associated with that, too, which explains why um, it was eaten, steamed, eaten, and then the, why somebody would do that, essentially. But apparently it's good for your health if you do come across one of these trees and then see that dog-like creature there. But then very rare compared to some of the other uh, spirits that I've talked about within these trees too. But again, if anyone has any more info about a mist, please post those comments below. So, Alright everyone, thanks again as always. Take care.